Hello and welcome to another episode of Lemur's Corner. I am Lemur and today we are going to be talking about New World. Uh, this is going to be the first in a series of videos talking about New World. Uh, this is a action-based MMO uh, that reminds me a lot of multiple games that have been out on the market before. Some have been short-lived, some have still some staying power right now, uh, and others that have different objects. So what an action-based MMO is, is basically, uh, it kind of looks more like a first-person shooter type situation where you got crosshairs, you're moving around. It's not like you stand in one spot casting 900 spells. You have basically three spells to pick from. Uh, you could actually argue for six, uh, but the versatility and differences in this world make it so much different than other MMOs, uh, which is, as I said, a, another video that I'm doing. I'm doing a couple videos on why I like it, why I don't like it, and some of the things that make it so different from normal MMOs. So let's just go ahead and jump into the game and start talking about some of those things uh, that are making this game what it is. Uh, first off, you have one character per realm. Uh, that is probably one of the biggest things that I've notice that um, it is really exciting about what this game is. Basically, you have one character that does everything per realm, so if you want to go to multiple realms, you can. That is completely up to you. So let's go ahead and first start off with the map and what it looks like and what's happening with it. Uh, so the map is divided into territories, uh, and there are three factions that fight over control of the territories, uh, and these territories are then controlled by companies. Uh, so to break it down simply put, uh, there are three factions uh, that are in there. Uh, you can see that there's this purple one, which is the Syndicate. You have the green one, uh, which is the Marauders. And then if you click on this yellow one, you can see it is the Covenant. Uh, this is who it's controlled by. Uh, so that basically means that's the governing faction, um, which allows you some benefits within the city. Uh, and then the governed is the uh, company that is running it. Uh, they get access to taxes and uh, crafting fees and things of that na nature um, and along with territory rewards and stuff like that. Uh, so with all of that being said, basically what ends up happening um, is within the territories as you mine, as you gather, as you complete quests within those territories, faction quests, non-faction quests, and all that kind of fun stuff, um, it allows uh, that faction, that territory to grow and allows your standing with that territory to grow. So uh, th as you can see here over on the right, you get access to more things such as decreased craft crafting fees, increased storage, more XP, more standing. Um, I can own a home if I choose to within there. Now, um, as you move further north, the levels of the buildings and places do increase. Um, so uh, obviously, as you can see uh, down here and moving up kind of in this general direction, you start getting higher and higher levels uh, until you reach the top on there. Uh, there are multiple different things you can look at on the map. Um, it breaks out how the terrain types are. It shows you where the buildings are. Uh, finding resources is really easy. Uh, it pretty much tells you like, hey, in the marshlands, you will find oil. Uh, so you find those marshlands on the map uh, and you'll find oil or you can find beach, coastal hills. Uh, you can see you've got forests right here, which would be that. You can find trees, hemp, and herbs. Uh, you can see there's impassable areas. Um, that's not always true. You can climb them, but they're pretty much in general mountains. Uh, sometimes you can climb over those if you find the right spot because of the mechanics of the game. Uh, and then you can see where the lines are broken out. You can see your quest markers um, and important areas. So you can see these are uncharted landmarks. Uh, normally quests will send you to these uncharted landmarks. There's different mobs in there that you can fight um, and different abilities. Then there's forts within each territory um, that uh, control until the evasions are done. So you want to take over the fort and then you want to take over the main settlement within it uh, but you can see there's all kinds of fun stuff and then there is corrupted monoliths uh, and corrupted uh, portals basically that have issues where the forces uh, that are corrupting the world that we're in uh, can be fought back and you can earn some nicer rewards uh, and some differences within there uh, basically you see this recommended levels uh, and things that you need like an Azov staff uh, which is basically kind of an attunement uh, within the main quest line uh, so uh, that's kind of the quick breakdown of the map um, that we have in there. Let's go ahead now and jump uh, into actually our uh, character UI. Uh, as I said, this is going to be a rough overview. I'm not trying to sit here and show you every single thing within the game. I'm just trying to show you what you have access to. Um, so you can see here that you have your bio where you can put your character name, your territory bonuses. You can see if you have any active bonuses. Um, 
all that kind of stuff and you can see what your stuff looks like within there and what you have to go. So because uh, my faction owns um, this territory, you can see I have a lot more bonuses uh, than if I were to stay where I am in Everfall uh, because I don't. Then you have ranks within your faction that give you faction tokens, which give you uh, armor, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but basically you can change your title. Once you've done certain things, you can be like, oh, well, I want to be uh, you know, an archaeologist or something like that, and you can apply it, and now you've got the title of archaeologist and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, but let's go ahead, and we're actually going to talk about Weapon Master and then we're going to back our way back into trade skills and attributes on there. Uh, reason being is weapon skills are more hardly based on attributes, uh, so we want to talk about those first. So weapon skills are kind of, in essence, your class. Uh, so basically you have uh, different weapons that basically you go in and you get to use, and when you're using these weapons, uh, you have the opportunity to go ahead um, and do whatever you want with them. Uh, then that gives you basically the idea of your stats uh, and what they do. So obviously there's magic weapons, ice gauntlet, so ice, fire, and then life, life being the healer. You have ranged weapons, which are the bow and the musket. You have the spear, great axe, warhammer is two-handed, and one-handed you have the sword and shield, rapier, and hatchet. Um, each one of them has different attributes that they are beneficial to, and they each have two separate uh, levels in them. You could have a sword master sword and shield uh, where they deal damage, they do reverse stabs, uh, they do leaping strikes, and it's more of a damage based sword and shield type situation uh, to assist things. Then you've got the defender, which is kind of your tank build, shield rush, shield bash, uh, and that kind of essence. Uh, on top of that, there are all kinds of different things in each one. So technically within the hatchet, um, you do have options that you can go ahead uh, and do different things within it. So you could have one where you do more damage damage and, and uh, production of that within that melee damage, then you could do throwing where you throw the hatchet, it does more damage, uh, which is what I personally use it for. Uh, then you have things like the spear where you can go in uh, and worry about more doing like impaling damage um, and you can skewer and rush forward and do damage, or you can throw it and do kind of more AOE damage, or you could do both. That is an option too. Um, you know, it's it's as you're building these things and as you're leveling them, it gives you the opportunity to do it in every level that you have using the weapon, the more and more you get the chance to play them and to break them out and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, that includes like things like musket. And as we talked about, you know, you could be a trapper musket um, where you put a trap down or have uh, stopping power in your musket, or you could do something more like a powered shot where you hit them when you overload your bullets. As I said, options are endless and this is all on one character. So as I use a weapon more, as I do more with it, I gain more levels, and as I gain more levels, I simply just get to be able to use, do more things within it. So as you can see in my short and sealed, I'm way down further because I use it the most along with my hatchet, as where something like the bow, uh, I haven't really used it that much, but you can see you at least get some bonuses just by using it in general. Uh, but by killing things, it gives you into that nature. Um, and then you can see here damage scales with, this tells you kind of what stats you need in order to level up. So because my character is uh, more of a tanky character, I use the hatchet and sword and shield regularly. So my main two skills I'm focused on are dex, uh, strength and constitution. Um, I recently got some new gear, so unfortunately uh, I lost my constitution bonus. Uh, what that means is basically uh, each one of these nodules you see down here within your bar, uh, it's every 50 points, give you increases to certain things within your character. So uh, if you were to put 100 points into constitution, you get an extra 10% um, health or t more health based on 10% of your actual armor, or you lose 10% reduction of durability loss when you do die of tools. Same thing in strength. You can see I get extra melee damages with light damage and mining speed. And then on top of it, you do get the access to the plus 10 damage to heavy attacks and extra encumbrance. As you continue going higher and higher in strength, you get more and more things that you get in it. But in Constitution, it's the same things, such as you get 25% to chop down a tree in a single swing, which is really cool at 300. Um, on top of it, as you level, uh, you get different rewards within the bigger rewards. So you get things like... Uh, ring slots, um, you get your first bag slot, you get survival quests, so that's at level 5, you get your second weapon slot, your first house at 15, uh, going all the way up to 60 where you can do outpost rush, uh, you can get three houses in essence, uh, by the end of it you get three bag slots um, and it tells you what you get access to on top of it, which if you look here you can see um, the territory start to open up for you, so at 24, 
or 25, you get access to Brightwood and Cutlass Keys. 30, you get access to Weaver's Fen, uh, and so on and so forth until you hit 60, which is Shattered Mountain and Reek Water. Um, but those are the leveling rewards, and that's one of the things that makes this thing so different is, and if I want to respec, I simply just hit the respec button, I spend my 68 gold, uh, and I can respec and be whatever I want to be uh, based on the weapon mastery that I have and level that up maybe. So with all of that being said, then you have access to what are trade skills. Trade skills are your professions and things of that nature that allow you to gather resources, refine resources, and craft things. Um, so basically, in essence, what you have is access to things like wood. You need to go chop trees down. You go chop some trees down. Uh, you get experience from harvesting things once you've chopped all the trees down or that you want to chop down. As you go up, you get access. Once you do more logging, you get access to better trees. So if you get to level 50 in logging, you get access to mature trees at 100 you get access to Whirwood, uh, which is also tracked at 125, so that means it literally shows up on your little menu bar, which is really nice to have. Or even on your map, um, that has access to it where you can track things. So like I can track small prey, at uh, 50 you track big prey, or medium prey at 75 it's large prey, 125 it's small predators, and 175 it's large predators. Um, and then you have weapons and gathering speed bonuses. Um, the f higher level, the faster you gather from things, the better your weapon, the faster you gather also. And the higher the reputation in the zone you're in, the better the the faster you gather also. So I do personally a lot of harvesting and mining. So you can see at my harvesting, I can get quite a bit of objects. Uh, I'm getting near that silkweed level. Uh, I get magical plants and all kinds of stuff like that right now. I use a sickle, so I get a lot more speed on there, um, which then cons that, which then rolls over to why my cooking arcana um, and armoring armoring is a lot higher. Uh, so then once you've gathered these resources, whether it's fishing, tracking, mining, logging, whatever it is, you then have to refine them. So you have to smelt down your ore that you get. You have to work the wood that's from your logging time. Uh, then your leatherworking comes from your skinning and tracking. Your weaving comes from your harvesting and your stone cutting actually comes from mining also because um, there are different versions. You can see here that in the stone, you get your gems that you can then cut down that will then allow you to use them in creating different armor, different items, different rings, but then on top of it, you can socket gems into your inventory slots that have access to that. Just like weaving is needed, you need all of these to do a lot of things. So if I want to create a piece of plate armor uh, or heavy armor is what it's called in here, uh, I in essence need to go ahead and get uh, some metal. I need to get some leather and I need to get some linen because it takes every piece based on what it is. If you think about it, it's just an armor plate. They need the leather to tie it kind of all together and then you need the cloth underneath it so you don't rip your skin to shreds. Uh, so you need all those pieces in order to do armoring uh, and different things. In engineering, you get access to all your tools, these little tools, and obviously your guns and your arrows. Uh, but your tools are a big deal uh, because it allows you to get access to uh, better crafting speed. So as you go up higher and higher, you get better crafting uh, within there uh, on your iron hatchet, your logging axe, uh, your mining pickaxe, and your fishing pole, and all that kind of stuff. And it just helps you uh, create them better. You can do it both at the workshop and the forge, um, which are in the city, which we will get to here in a minute. But every city has access to these all. Um, as a note, I forgot about this from earlier. If you are in any city, so any settlement within here, whether your faction controls it or not, you can use the uh, workshops and things of that nature in the city. You are not limited. Uh, however, if you choose to flag PvP, anyone in there can kill you. That's the same as any other place within here. But the point is, is basically uh, if your faction has control over it, um, you have more people around you and you get more bonuses and you get more access to the passive things. Uh, but the PVE PVP standpoint is basically you choose when you want it on and you choose when you want it off. It's kind of nice to have. Uh, but jumping back here, um, going back to our trade skills and stuff, you have access to all these things. You can do what you want to do and you can level up what you want to level up. If you really like harvesting, then go harvesting crazy. If you like doing the refining and building, you can keep crafting all of these things and having a blast with it, but you need to level up your character. As I said, you can create a lot of your own gear. It's really nifty that you have access to everything in here and it's not just there, including furnishings where you can furnish your own building uh, that you can get for houses. So uh, in essence, you get access to tons of things. Um, there is going to be things where they have deals where you buy using uh, your tokens here and you can buy more tokens. Eventually, I'm guessing Marks of Fortune is what they're called. Um, 
through money. So skins are going to be things that you can purchase as a temporary object. Uh, but in essence, you can see you have access to these. You can buy them. You can do housing skins like the celestial hair, or you can do company crates where you get certain things, uh, weapon skins if you choose to do it, or a complete bundle if you really wanted to. Uh, but basically, in a nutshell, you get a lot of access to a lot of different things. Uh, depending on what you're looking for. Uh, and then within it, then you do have access to companies where you do wars, siege windows, treasury, um, people that are online. You can see all companies. You can look at the ranks. Um, it's just... It's crazy what the depth of what you want it to do. Uh, your journal is your quest log, basically. You can look at what you need. You can do location quests. There's town project quests, recipes. Uh, you can look at the documents, so things that you're looking for pages of the entire chronicles um, that you have. So then you can reread all those information, which kind of breaks you down what's happening. So you can kind of go into some of these and see what pages you're missing. Go back and find them if you choose to uh, or not. That is completely up to you. Uh, within there. Um, plus with this being owned by Amazon, if you are a streamer, it will allow you to put, if you're streaming it, it'll have a spotlight on there. It allows you to integrate both your stream and your company. So if someone subs to your channel, they could actually join your company if you wanted to. Uh, just a lot of crazy stuff that you can do that's really nifty on here. Um, and as I said, it tells you how many claims you own and all that kind of stuff. So um, it's it's really nifty to take a look at these things and look at them. Uh, so now we're just going to talk briefly about what we're looking at here um, on the game and what it looks like and all that kind of fun stuff. So first things first is you do have two weapon slots uh, that you have. Uh, you get to pick two of them. You can switch between them quickly. Uh, you can press the one, two button to access them. Um, as I said, what you do is up to you completely, um, and how you run it is completely up to you. Uh, then you have access to your inventory. You hit tab, and you can get access to that. You've got your standard armor slots, your uh, ammo slots. You have ring slots, bag slots, a second one, earring slots, another bag slot of 45. Uh, and then you get access to like your Azeroth staff, Azov staff slot, which is part of the main quest line. Um, you can do browsing of skins, which comes right out of there, as we talked about. Uh, but you have your two weapon slots. You can carry a second weapon. So like, let's say if I'm in a fight uh, and I'm starting to die, so I need to quickly jump over, grab this, drop it in there, um, and it'll say, hey, I haven't equipped this yet, but we'll bind it to myself. Um, we'll quickly drop it, and then I can use it to cast uh, items and things on the ground. And then if I want to, I could switch back. However, you cannot do it until the cooldowns for the special items for that uh, weapon are down. So you can't just be hard cycling as fast as you want, but you can carry an extra weapon if you choose to. Uh, it's really one of those nice things. You have access to potions. You have access to food. The food is more of a slow recovery of life. Potions give you immediate recovery of life if you need access to it. You have your quest items, and everything's based off of your inventory encumbrance, based off of the weight of the item. Uh, so you can drop items, you can give coins, you can interact with people, trade them uh, if you don't want them anymore. And then you have this thing called Azoth. Um, Azoth is one of those things that you get from Corrupted Breaches and Quests. Um, and sometimes you get it from other little things here and there too. But basically what ends up happening is... Um, Azoth is your way to fast travel about the world. There are no mounts or anything of that nature. So Azoth allows you to go back and forth and jump around and do what you need to do. Uh, then you have access to repair parts. Repair parts allow you to repair all your gear. So you can see there's some uh, durability damage to a couple of my items. So if I were to hit repair all, it'll say you cost you 32 coins, 16 repair parts. I say yes, and bam, all my gear is now full, uh, fully repaired and up and running and ready to go. Uh, the type of armor you're using does depend on how your character is played slightly. Uh, so you can see here, the lower the armor, the better uh, certain damages. Uh, so light armor, you run quickly, uh, you can dodge, roll, and you get 20% extra damage. So that's wearing like pretty much all cloth. Medium means you're wearing leather stuff normally. Uh, you can kind of mix and match a little bit. So sometimes you can get away with like an ar a heavier armor piece as long as you stay in that medium armor range. You deal 10% extra damage and you... Um, 
Uh, you apply crowd control effects that last 10% longer, and then heavy armor, your dodge is slowed sidestep, your block stability is increased by 15%, and crowd group hold debuffs are by 20%. Um, and then there is encumbrance, uh, which is actually pretty devastating in this game. Uh, it is not like other games encumbrance, um, where either A, you just can't hold anymore because your bags are full, or B, when you're encumbered, you walk really slow, but you could, you know, maybe ride something to get back or whatever it is. Uh, encumbrance in this game, you can't fast travel, you can't do anything. Anything, so paying attention to your encumbrance is huge. Uh, but with that being said, what's nice is that you have storage sheds inside cities. These storage sheds, you can go ahead uh, and use them to craft out of without having the items in your actual inventory, which is really nice. All you have to have on you is your items uh, that you have for quests. Um, and so when you have those items are there. Now looking at the top of the bar, you can see what we're talking about for the directional bar. It's just a standard northeast, southwest directional bar, sliding bar at the top with the degrees, um, just like many action games right now. Uh, however, the catch and fun of this uh, comes down to once you start getting your harvesting up. Uh, so for example, if you look kind of towards the northeast here where my arrow's looking, it is showing me I am tracking a bunny rabbit it uh, directly in front of me so if I needed something for maybe to hunt down bunnies for a quest uh, you can see that it'll guide me directly to this awesome little bunny right here um, they are just passive animals so when you take them down they literally just fall over and then it glows to let you know you could skin it or do something with it uh, same thing kind of with uh, trees here so if in essence if I walk up to a tree uh, you can see there's an E in a rank tool and you can see oh, I can either harvest it or do this um, if I just pick up a bush it'll give me one green wood and it doesn't give me any locking levels uh, but if I take down this tree you can see it takes a little bit longer uh, one, because I'm in a faction zone that I'm not normally in. Uh, two is the fact that it is a young tree and I don't have my logging all the way up. And then you see your logging gain right there. Uh, plus, it says I got 26 green wood there uh, on top of it. Um, but if you look to the left when that cops up, you're going to see your total number of green wood that you have. So I got plus four, but I have 31 green wood because it's in the bottom right of that little logo down there. Uh, so... And then when you can't do something, it tells you, hey, this requires level 50 logging in order for you to be able to do it. Uh, it's a really intricate and well thought out object uh, that you can do. Almost everything in the world is technically harvestable, uh, but it's very simple. Now, when we're talking about why it's an action-based MMO is you're going to see as I jump over here, I want to take out this wolf. So in order to take out this wolf, I'm going to huck my... Uh, hatch it at it, throw some more stuff at it, and you're going to see all the damage. So now I can switch to my shield, I can block some attacks, swing into it, and you can see the damage popping up on the screen here. Uh, that's going to be a special move from the Dire Wolf, and then it's just going to fall over. I get my XP, I get my weapon XP, I get some standing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and loot that item so it drops. Uh, even if you're in a group with other people, everyone gets access to loot. Loot is individual, not group-based. And then maybe um, if I want to, I can go ahead and do some skinning, grab some rawhide off this dog. And then next thing you know, I'm on the move and making my way forward. Uh, that's pretty much the essence of the game is completing the quests on the journey, running around and uh, doing things. Then there are things called expeditions that you have access to. These expeditions allow you to go in with uh, four other people, uh, total five people, uh, beat up some stronger monsters, get some better gear. Uh, but in essence, your factions are going to be your most important access point uh, earlier levels that you have access to. So uh, as I said, there's a lot to do in this game. This is not just your other day MMO. Um, where it's grind out these quests, do this, uh, run this dungeon repeatedly, you know, whatever it is. Uh, how you want to gain levels, how fast you want to gain levels, what you do when you're in here. PvP, PvE, harvesting, crafting, uh, dungeon diving, quest grinding, hanging out with friends, whatever it is. It gives you access to that and you're not punished for making any one of those directions as a choice voices versus the other. So overall, I'd say highly recommend this game. I will be playing this game on launch. It does launch on April 31st. Uh, the closed beta, which is what you are watching the video of right now, uh, is completely done. Uh, so at this point, you can no longer play it, but you can go ahead and check it out in the Steam score. I'll link to it down below uh, and you can have access to that. If you are interested in possibly joining our company, that we're probably going to be starting up go ahead and drop me a message uh, or join our discord that links down below too also uh, and go ahead and hop in there i will make a
make a new rank for the new world. Uh, and we're going to try to do a company um, and try to pick factions and stuff and try to get people in there. So everyone let me know if you want to do it. But thank you so much for watching. If you have any feelings about new world or anything of that nature, or if this video has got you excited, please let me know in the comments down below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. But as always, I hope you all have a fantastic day and we see you on the next episode of Lemur's Corner.